praise God today. Praise the Lord. You know I'm free from sin. I'm filled with sin. Just want to be born again. God help me preach today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we make promises every day. Our country was built on promises. This country has historically made many promises that were not kept. Skepticism, cynicism, criticism are part of our consciousness, especially in this year three that we have weathered the storms of COVID-19. And now, within two weeks time, various U.S. departments are coming forth with reports as to where the origins of this virus began. I don't know about you, but I really don't give a fat rat's behind where the coronavirus came from. All I know is that it ain't gone nowhere. Even with the promise of sheltering in place, socially isolating, quarantining, wearing masks, even with the promise of a vaccine, even with the promise of boosters, having boosters, even with the promise of antivirals like Paxlovid, determining where this virus from hell came from is a moot point because I guarantee another mutation of another something is brewing that's not a promise but a fact. Some of us might even find ourselves in the identity will of overpromising and underperforming because we believe that our superhuman, extraordinary, and powerful enough to pull out what our heart and mind desire self, yet are not humanly able to see it through. And so we kind of lie in the promises we make whether personal or professional, because the shame of our finitude and limitations will be perceived as a character flaw, perhaps by a society that is wrapped up on the idea of awesome and exceptionalism. And sometimes, beloved, it is perfectly okay to just be okay. Politicians are making promises and plans. In fact, every election year, politicians make promises. They say what they think we want to hear and once elected, break all the promises. We even stand up in this country and pledge allegiance to a flag. We promise to be one nation under God that is not divided and that provides liberty and justice for all. Yet there are grave injustices that occur in this country and around the world. If I could offer conjecture here based upon my own empirical collection of data drawn from the lives of those whose paths have intersected with this ministry God called me to service to the kingdom of grace, broken promises lead to broken dreams and, yes, broken souls. Robert Frost writes about the feelings of a snowy evening stranded in the woods, and the only thing that kept hope alive was knowing and remembering that promises to keep and the miles to go before the eternal sleep. In his Declaration of Love, the R&B soul music singer Christopher Williams put it this way, promises, promises we don't keep, promises, promises we can't eat nor sleep, promises, promises. When was the last time you made a promise? When was the last time you made a promise to God? Bargaining with God, pleading with God in our prayers. Lord, if you just heal me, I'll serve you. If you let me win the lottery, I'll tithe. God, if you just let me pass this test, I'll give you glory. Promises, promises. God doesn't need our pitiful promises to do anything. God just wants us to keep the faith. God is the promise keeping God well. This Bible is filled with the promise of God to humankind and the greatest of which is the promise of salvation through faith. God says it to us, we should believe it and that should settle it. 
I am convincing and preaching to myself today. Let me just remind you and even me that Jesus is real. God is real to me. Oh, yes, he gave me the victory. So many people doubt him, but I don't know about you. I can't live without him. That's why I love him so, because he's so real to me. Can't you feel God is real? If you can't, just touch yourself. Can't you see God is real? If you don't know, then just look around you. Can you taste and see that God is good and God's mercy endures forever? All we need to do is believe God. And beloved, there is an enormous difference between believing in God and believing God. So journey with me through God's promises. The first promise is found in the Genesis when God told Adam and Eve that God would put ill will between man and woman because what happened in the Garden of Eden. No wonder men and women fuss so much. And moreover, no wonder folks are afraid to imagine a woman can lead this country or a state or a church or educational institutions. The sad thing is this. Women are women's worst enemies. Yes, I said it. Know it fully well that it's Women's History Month. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Well, the second promise found in Genesis is when God established a covenant or promise with Noah, saying that never again will the earth be destroyed by water and the rainbow will be a sign of the covenant. God promised that God wouldn't curse the ground again because of our evil nature. Another promise found in the Genesis is dealing with Abram. Can I offer you another bit of conjecture today? You know the story Abram is really about immigration. This country can learn a lot about how we treat immigrants and foreigners, illegal aliens, the undocumented, and the uncounted. Abram didn't have a green card, neither was he a naturalized citizen. But thank God and amen. Abram's documentation and citizenship will be recorded above as he is rebirthed and born again in heaven's census data. Because of Abraham's willingness to trust God, to love God enough to step out on faith, to leave his old life and journey, to travel to an unknown place, an unfamiliar territory, and to lean on God through this journey, God promises Abraham that every descendant of Abraham would be blessed. This blessing includes Abraham's firstborn son, Ishmael, the patriarch of Islam, and Israel, whose birth name was Jacob, and Brahman, which is an anagram of Abraham. As a matter of fact, Abraham is the father of many nations. Can I share this immigration and birth of many nations story? Don't miss it. Abraham was prolific with procreation and progenitor of progenic promised prosperity as the patriarch of Ishmael, Isaac, Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Median, Ishbak, Shua. Abraham is considered to be the progenitor of many nations mentioned in the Bible. Can I recapitulate so you can repeat? Among others besides the Ishmaelites, Israelites, Midianites, you can find this in Genesis, the 25th chapter, Abraham's grandchild, Esau's descendants, the Edomites and Amalekites and the Kizanites and the Assyrians, also known as the Chaldeans or the Arameans. You can still find this in the 25th chapter of the Genesis. And through his nephew Lot, Abraham was also related to the Moabites and the Ammonites. This is in Genesis, the 19th chapter. Abraham lived to see his son Isaac marry Rebekah and possibly see the birth of his twin grandsons, Jacob and Esau. 
Abraham died at the age of 175 and was buried in the cave of Machpelah by his sons Isaac and Ishmael. That is in Genesis, the 25th chapter, and repeated in 1 Chronicles, the first chapter. I wish folks would ask me the question rather than getting caught up in the geopolitics that have races and capitalistic overturns due to overturned tones due to the colonized experience rather than a cosmic Christological understanding that God so loved the world because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and those who dwell therein. Now that you know the birth of many nations story of great migration and immigration, follow me to today's text found in Romans, the fourth chapter, starting at verse 13. It is clear then that God's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was not because Abraham obeyed God's laws, but because Abraham trusted God to keep God's promise. So if you still claim that God's blessings go to those who are good enough, then you are saying that God's promises to those who have faith are meaningless and faith is foolish. But the fact of the matter is this, when we try to gain God's blessings and salvation by keeping laws, we always fail to keep them. So the only way we can keep from breaking laws is simply not have any to break. We should stop fooling ourselves into thinking that we can keep all of the Ten Commandments. Stop fooling ourselves that we can obey speed limits. Stop fooling ourselves that if we do the right thing as society dictates that we can't have a perfect life. If you believe that, then God help you today. Beloved, God's blessings are given to us by faith as a free gift. Ain't nothing that we can do to earn God's blessings except believe God. Like Abraham, who is the father of faith of us all. The example for us to follow when it comes to the matter of faith. God will accept everybody in every nation all over the world who trust God as Abraham did. As a matter of fact, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus who I'd like to refer to as Nick at night because he came to Jesus at night and asked him a question about being born again. How could that possibly be a reality? And Jesus breaks this thing down by saying, though if I be lifted up from the earth, all souls will be drawn to me by believing that God so loved the world that God gave God's only begotten son that whosoever believes in him as a prince of peace, believe in him as a burden bearer, believe in him as Mary's baby, believe in him who was born to an undefiled, unindoctrinated woman who has, a, the, who has been chosen to give birth to God, yet can lead God's church, God's nations, or God's people, make that make sense. Believe in him and his ministry as inclusive that welcomed those in the margins. Believe in him that stood up against the established government for justice and God's will to be done. Believe in him that no greater love has a man that he would lay down his life for a friend. Believe in him that you must have have fire and Holy Ghost, that kind of religion that keeps the prayer wheels turning, that kind of thing that you cannot conceal. It makes you move. It makes you shout. It makes you cry when it's real. Believe in him and keep your hand right in the master's hand. Let your soul be anchored in my Jesus name. Then you have your questions at midnight answered just like Nicodemus. Can't you see? You got to be born again. Rebirth refreshed, renewed, done away with the old ways of thinking, through the old through with the old ways of living, finished with the foolishness and folly of the fickle faithless folks who are scared to believe
receive God as a way maker, a burden bearer, a healer, sustainer, and deliverer. But thanks be to God and amen that the kingdom of God's grace stretches beyond the borders and boundaries and walls where I'm amazed how located and limited some are in theological understanding of God. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God's thoughts are not my thoughts and God's ways are not my ways because surely I would put limits on who is able to come into God's grace, but because God shows no partiality, nor does God discriminate based on the isms and the schisms that we have devised to divide, our good God Almighty through Jesus the Christ declares that whoever believes will not perish, but have everlasting life. This is more than enough. I don't need you to tolerate me or include me or affirm who I am because God is the great I am who is and who was and who is to come and who created the multiple identities and multiple perspectives in a mosaic of hues and although our epidermis that huge organ called skin is there for protection if we pull that layer back we all look exactly the same in our sinews in our ligaments in our intricate mechanisms of internal organs, but somewhere along the way, our minds and our hearts got twisted up and confused when hate and racism, sexism, heterosexism, denominationalism are brandished with the seductive promises of power. When if we just humbled ourselves and think that we don't even have the power to wake ourselves up, so why would we be convinced some, some other human has power and even authority to do anything but fail and fall short? Somebody needs to be reassured today that you is kind, you is smart, you is good enough because God said so. So I just need to remind all of us that God did not send God's son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. In case you didn't realize, the world is much bigger than you and the U.S. of us. God is so loved that God so loved the world. And that does include our Islamic brothers and sisters, our Jewish brothers and sisters, our Hindu brothers and sisters, our poor brothers and sisters, our straight as well as curvy brothers and sisters. And guess what? This promise is from God who makes the dead live again and who speaks of future events with much certainty as though they already exist. God is the faithful one to trust. God will not allow your foot to be moved. God will will keep you. God will not slumber. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. So stand on this promise today. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. So believe God's promise. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. God shall preserve your soul. So believe God. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time and forever more? Is there anybody who is willing to trust God, to try God, and see will God open up windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you won't have room to receive? Somebody must be thinking, I don't know what's happening, but I declare with God on your side, that's more than the world against you. I don't know about you. Somebody might be wondering, how can I trust anybody? How can I trust anybody who's made promises to me all of my life? All those promises have been broken. How can I trust anybody? Somebody needs to know today that you can trust God. You can trust God and know that God's promises are granted through faith. You can trust God and stand on God's promises that God will never leave you alone. You are loved and you all you need is faith. Well, can you remind 
is what faith is, preacher? Yes. Faith is still the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is resilience and trust in God. How do you know you got faith? Well, faith helps you to stand when you've been knocked down. Faith helps you to stand when your heart has been broken. Faith helps you find peace in the midst of terror. Faith helps you rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Faith helps you through this COVID-19 again and again. With faith, we can glory in our struggles, knowing that struggles produces perseverance, and perseverance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint. Jesus promised, if you seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, all these things will be added to you. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. Beloved, Jesus says, I promise you that if you have faith, a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to the mountains or whatever obstacles in your life, get out of my way. And even as we go through our stuff, as the psalmist declared, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Because the Lord will be keeping your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Forevermore includes flying to and fro. Forevermore includes cruising on the ocean's distances far beyond the shore. Forevermore includes driving down the highways and thoroughfares. Forevermore includes recognizing and realizing that I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine for its clouds might turn to gray. I don't worry over the future for I know what Jesus said but today I'll walk beside him for he knows what is ahead we can stand on the promises today because Jesus stood on Calvary's mountain one Friday afternoon he stood there nailed to the cross he stood there in fact he decided to die to save you and me and he was buried in a borrowed tomb because he knew his death was only temporary to prove God's promise from suffering, hallelujah, to salvation. Somebody needs to be reassured that your tears and your troubles are only temporary. You want to know why? Because Jesus destroyed the sting of suffering and shame and defeated death by rising up out of the grave with Holy Ghost power so that we can stand on the promise that salvation is free. To all who believe, stand on the promises of Christ our King. Through eternal ages, let his praises sing. Glory in the highest, let us shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Is anybody today fully convinced that God is able to perform what God has promised? That God still so loved the world that God created. That God did not send God son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I don't know about you, but I sure love the Lord. You don't know what he's done for me. Come on and unmute yourself. Engage